the high priests of golf traveled from every corner of the world to Pinehurst in the southern section of North Carolina, a quaint colonial town set in the heart of the Old South. Its streets hold a hint of New England, while many of its fine residences have been built by people whose main object in living here is to play golf. A spacious hotel accommodates the pilgrims who journey to the southern golf capital, where three courses furnish the main interest of natives and visitors alike. With afternoon, shop owners suspend business to answer the call of the fairway. Golf fever's in the air at Pinehurst, and it affects all. Rich man, poor man, merchant, chief. But it's always the golfing season here. The news store proprietor calls time out selling papers to play a round with a banker. Haircuts are the main business of the local barbers, but they're not the sort who let business interfere with pleasure. And the gentlemen of the cloth leave for the country club to mingle with their flocks on the fairways. Taylor Town, two miles from Pinehurst, is the home of the Caddies. One of the most unusual settlements in America, it is inhabited almost exclusively by Caddies and their families. Their homes have been built with money obtained from the chief industry of Taylor Town, chasing golf balls. All of them love their work, and they're glad when they have to punch the time clock and take their places in line. There's plenty of work for everyone, for regulations discourage golfers from hiring favorite caddies. So they take their turns at assignments, these servants of the great god Niblick, and into their hands is given care of the tools of their sporting employers. Let's visit the Pinehurst Country Club, home of the famous North-South Championship course. And from the veranda of the clubhouse, we view Maniac Hill, where golfers tune up their shots before they tee off. Almost every champion in America has pushed a ball around this practice green. And now we're in for the start of the North-South Tournament, so let's join the gallery and watch the play of champions. Here's Southern champion Johnny Revolter. George Dunlap gets one away. What's the relaxation and easy follow through as Ed Dudley drives? Hard hitting Jimmy Thompson. The list of celebrities among the contenders and in the gallery reads like the who's who in golf. And now they go to the green where many a golf game is won or lost. Ed Dudley demonstrates the putting form that wins championships. On the green, it's a star-spangled tournament of champions. The gallery goes on to the next tee. Denny Shute, professional golf association champion, is up among the leaders. Myron Nelson slams one down the fairway. Jimmy Thompson, lowest medalist of the year, drives. Vic Getze cracks a long one onto the green. Thompson chips one from the edge of the green. And he sinks it. The gallery again focuses its interest on Ed Dudley's smooth green shots. Jimmy Hines turns for a look at the camera during a tense moment on the green. Let's move on with the gallery to the 17th tee where Ralph Gouldall drives. Long, hard drives feature the play of these champions of the fairway. One after another, they bang them out in a battle royal of the North-South title. Bobby Jones, all-time golfer number one, photographs the final moments in the playing of a great match as Bobby Crookshank drives. The gallery moves on to the 18th green. Horton Smith, defending North and South champion, is out of the running, and it looks like Vic Getze, New Jersey professional, with a 277, is about to annex the title. He misses, but he takes the tourney on the final putt with a score of 279 for his 72 holes.
Vic Getsy is the victor of the coveted North-South golf title, and he's the center of a crowd of fervent golf fans. But let's take a look at some of the feminine champions at Pinehurst. Estelle Lawson Page drives in perfect form. Miss Dorothy Kirby smacks one off the tee. Here's the form that made Virginia Hemphill a champion. Miss Helen Guilfoyle demonstrates her greens game with a perfect putt. Firmly placed in the sand, Mrs. Hemphill shows the explosion shot, striking the ball with a digging stroke, and it drops right up near the pin. Last year's North and South champion, Horton Smith, first shows his putting skill, and then the overlapping grip, well up on the shaft. The club is gripped lightly, but firmly, as he uses a slightly pushing stroke. Here's another try. And it's good. Tony Monero shows a lifting chip shot with a slight backspin on the ball to hold it on the green. Now Jimmy Thompson shows the form that it takes to make the longest drives in golf. The overlapping grip, the left thumb along the shaft. Then the weight is evenly distributed, but shifts slightly to the right foot on the backswing. His eyes are on the ball as the club head strikes. Johnny Revolta gets in trouble, but he digs into the sand for a firm stance and blasts his way out of the trap. Strict attention to every phase of the game and constant practice make Johnny a sharpshooter. Once more the overlapping grip, down just far enough to permit the head to strike under the ball. The position of the feet helps to control the loft of the ball, but a firm stance is essential to the execution of a good shot. Denny Shute displays his grip for an iron shot off the tee, used on shorter holes. Notice the weight shift as he follows through in the rhythm of the swing. Then there it goes, right up onto the green. Here's Vic Getze's stance that spells success for his drive. Back swing is unhurried, with no hesitation starting the downstroke of the drive that drops the ball right onto the green. This is the game that supplies recreation to three million Americans and built this town among the pines. You've seen the champions in action, the big guns of American golf. <laughs>